exercise, number one, and, and would you reveal what was on your, your cards and what you uh, had to say you're, you're trying to get better at? Um, yeah, I can talk about it a little bit. Uh, so it's really just getting you, uh, get you, just give you something to work for that week. Uh, mine was really just playing blocks better, uh, having better eyes, having better feet, uh, standing on my blocks a little longer, letting the uh, backers work a little bit. So and, uh, uh, that kind of plays in hand-to-hand hand hand with everybody because everybody from every group has something they need to work on. So I think it's a big step for us going into uh, this new week. Tom, just how would you ex uh, assess how the defensive line as a whole has played through three games? And what area do you feel like you guys need to improve the most going forward? I feel like we played together as a as a uh, collect group, but I feel like we got to stop the run a little bit more. Uh, we haven't really been tested like that uh, as, as much as we as much as we thought, but uh, we know it's coming down uh, down the road. We got some big uh, big teams coming up, uh, so we got to get ready for that. I know Coach Mark never talks about Darnell Washington. Talks about the way he's able to displace. They were close defenders. I was wondering uh, all the times you've seen the practice in the last couple of years, do you have an example of maybe when he displaced one of uh, his own teammates? Shoot, uh, last week, I'll say for sure, uh, <laughs> uh, he, he put his hands on me a little bit. He felt he, like when he's when he's in there blocking, he's really like an extra uh, offensive tackle. So, and but being 6'7", 280, that's kind of him. So he, he's he got to use that to his game, and I feel like he does. Simon, you're a guy that's kind of had to wait your turn a little bit in this program. You see guys like Stetson and Dan that, that started their careers walk-ons and are now have worked their way with the depth chart. Did that kind of validate for you the you know, by buy into the process and everything? Eventually, I'll have success here. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's it's just like it's also getting respect from your t from your peers. When you see guys like uh, Dan Jackson, who's worked his tail off, he's he came in with me, worked his tail off from day one. Um, like he's just uh, he was a, a silent guy, just uh, kept his head down and worked. So when you see that, it's kind of like okay. I know I can. Uh, I know I can depend on him and trust him. So you heard me talk a lot about how important it is for pressure to be placed. So when you guys can get turnovers, you think he said pressure creates turnovers. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit more about that focus on getting pressure on the quarterback and making sure that um, the offense is making mistakes so that we can capitalize off of the uh, off of your defense? Oh uh, yeah, pressure plays a big uh, big role in every game that we play now because you know everybody wants to make us one dimensional. So when, like so whenever. Your quarterback just sitting there having he got all the time in the world. We got to find out. We got to find a way to get pressure on him. So, uh, like last week, we wanted to get uh, get Spencer off his uh, point a lot. We really didn't, but we just got to keep working on that. Zion, with a uh, a lot more media attention kind of flow in the past couple of weeks, with y'all being the number one ranked team, uh, you being one of the vocal leaders on the team and, and having experienced all that pressure, especially last season. What do you kind of tell those younger guys who are? Experience it maybe for the first time this year. Uh, don't look at it as pressure. Just look at it as uh, you're gonna you're, you're getting prepared for it every week. Like I'll, I'll say, our practices are harder than our games. Like when we make it that way, because so by the time Saturday gets here, you've seen every play, you've seen everything that they can do. You now you just got to go react and play. Speaking of those younger guys, what have you seen from Michael Williams this fall? Say it one more time. Speaking of those younger guys, what have you seen from Michael Williams this fall? Uh, just being a, a twitchy guy, he just he loves to he loves to contact, he loves to uh, just play fast. And like when he, he when he um, puts some more weight on and gets like older, I, I'll say he's gonna be a, a force to reckon with. So when uh, Kirby was in here, he was talking about some of the younger guys like Bear going up against the first team and what a challenge that is. And he brought up what that was like for you these last few years. What was that challenge like, just as you were trying to improve and having the task of going up against guys like Justin Schaefer and, and some of those guys? Shoot, 2019, that was the year that that molded me. Uh, Andrew Thomas, uh, Solomon Kinley, Trey Hill. K Mays or Ben Cleveland, then you got Isaiah Wilson. So when you look across you and you see that line, it's, it's nothing more that can prepare you for SEC football. So I feel like that that really played a big uh, big thing in my life because I was I, that's what I tried to make myself the first two years a run stopper, and I felt like that's what kind of built me to who I am today. Um, what is it like playing with um, guys like Nolan Smith who has such show leadership on and off the field? Shoot, no. Noah's a Noah's a character. Uh, you like you love him. Like he he just bring he just brings that uh, that energy that the whole team needs. Like today I was very down and I heard him I heard him uh, out out there yelling and I was like, come on, uh, you got to get up, you got to go. So he plays a big role in that. Speaking of Baron Kristen, what have you seen from them? You know, just watching them develop. 
uh, they got yeah, both of them got a long way to go. They're both very talented. Like when, uh, they just gotta uh, trust the plan, trust what our coaches are telling them, and just keep working. Just, just go be who they are. Okay, talk a bit about um, your areas of growth and how you've grown as a leader. Um, and just the best one. Shoot, just leading, leading by example. I try to say. So, uh, whether whether it's. Um, whether it's uh, cheering my guys on, whether it's out there leading by example, actually striking guys, actually running to the football, actually uh, knowing my assignments, uh, executing my assignments. I feel like that that plays a big role in if, if people listen to you, if they'll take you serious or not. So when you do that, I feel like it'll, it'll play it'll play play into your hand well. Kirk, we were talking about Darius Smith yesterday as a, as a big guy that's, that's playing some of space. What have you seen from him that says he's kind of cross-training this outside linebacker, safety star, kind of hybrid position? He's just a freak athlete. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, Adam Anderson a little bit, but like when I actually went back and uh, watched Darius running in track, it just—it's crazy. Like somebody that big can run that fast, it can cover tight ends, also possibly cover a slot receiver. It's just it, when he learns actually how to play the position, he's going to be very good. I'm not asking to give away any kind of state secrets or anything, but when you look at what the offense has done, what we've seen the offense do so far through three games, and what you've seen during practice and Paul can't leave nothing out, how much more is on the, is in that, the play that they can possibly do the rest of the year? Shoot, I don't doubt Tom Monkey. Tom Monkey going to pull anything out. So, you know, it will be some plays. There's been some plays in practice that you're like, where, where did that come from? So. He's he's a very he's a very uh, intelligent person when it comes to uh, dialing up stuff, and I think he's just going to keep building on it uh, throughout this year. Just just a quick follow up: When you talk to some of your offensive teammates, what kind of comments do you hear from them about about Coach Monk and the mad scientist uh, aspect? I guess he kind of brings. Uh, they love him. Uh, they love the energy that he brings. He's kind of like a father to a lot of them, and like, they don't they, they don't like him at times. But like you, you can't you can't not love Monkin. But it's just it, you get he's kind of taken with a grain of salt sometimes. Tom, what has said out to you about Jamon? How many has played through the first uh, few games this year? He's a flash. He's a flash guy. Like he, he doesn't, he doesn't really talk a lot, but when he talks, he 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 definitely backs it up. So, I think if, as long as he just keeps playing like that along this year, he's gonna be great. You talked about how you and Dan kind of came in together. Uh, what was your reaction watching back his interception from Saturday? <laughs> um, I think I was actually in on that play. And I seen it. I seen it turn. I seen it thrown. So I'm turning and looking. And I just see it, him go up and take it away from the guy. I'm just like, wow. Like, and I've seen him make plays like that in fall camp. Um, he's a he's a ball hawk. He he really loves being around the ball. He's a he's actually he's a leader back there when when he's out there. And I think that everything's just falling in his lap right now. So they typically say that when you get more experience, the game kind of slows down for you. Can you talk a bit about how you see the game now as opposed to when you first came into Georgia? It definitely slows down. Um, like the like little things we talk about throughout the week, it's not as a, as a whole defense, but it like it's a defensive line group. Like we go through and we look at um, how light is he on his hand, how heavy is he on his hand, things like that. So when you when you use those things to your to your advantage, it makes the game easier. It makes the game slower for you. You guys know him being a character. He seems like he talk about his truck a lot. Does he ever bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> that Ford Raptor is his life. <laughs> that is, um, but yeah, he's he's one of those guys, man. He he love he loves doing what he, he he loves going outside. He loves he loves being outside in the elements. So I feel like that truck really fits him. Stay two more two more questions. One more. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, 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 u